Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video we are uh, heading off to RD to collect a load of maize meal. I've talked to Section 930 with me. Um, I'm doing a bit of washing and cleaning on it over the last week. Uh, it has been fit for very little else with the weather, so uh, just tidying it up a wee bit. And I just haven't drove it much in a while. I said, well, we're taking on a couple of runs now with me over the next a couple of weeks so that's what we're doing today uh, yeah so we're heading to, heading to RD to pick up this maize meal we are almost there we're just coming up to the gate of our location now and uh, yeah we'll see what we get on board I think we should be able to take about 15 or 16 ton uh, on the trailer uh, we don't just don't like to overfill it because uh, there is no rollover cover for it and uh, if it is windy and you've no roll over cover, roll over cover uh, the maze does tend to, to to blow about a bit, especially when you're moving uh, at, at high enough speed. So uh, I'll probably not be able to travel home at full tilt. Uh, you're usually limited to maybe around 35, 40 kilometers an hour, depending on the wind that's out there as well. So yeah, we'll just have to, we'll see, but we should have about 15 ton on board. Um, yeah, so we're nearly at our destination. We're just pull down here and get on to the get on to the way bridge and we'll get with it. filled up en route back home we have uh, just over 15 ton on the trailer which isn't too bad uh, it's, it's not full up to the top it's just below the, the level of the trailer just to try and minimize the amount of uh, material being blown off of the wind 
is the wind has definitely picked up from my left the yard. So yeah, we're hopping the manager's speed. We're, we're traveling between 30 and 35 kilometers an hour on the way home. So we're not going that quick. Um, and it's working to a certain degree. We're not, most of the time we're not losing anything at all, but just at certain times, if there's a bit of a gust of wind comes, uh, you can just see some dust blowing off the top of it, like right now at the minute, there's a, there's a bit blowing off. So yeah, we'll just have to, we'll keep an eye on it, but not much we can do about it. Um, <clears throat> ideally, if we had a cover for the trailer, we'd stop all this, but for the, you know, for the couple of times a year that this happens, there's not really, for the cost of putting the cover on the trail up, uh, it wouldn't be really worth it, I don't think. Like, I don't, I don't know what uh, a cover costs. Like, would, would two grand cover the cost of it, cover the cost of it? Uh, I don't know, so uh, it might be a bit less, it might be a bit more, but for the couple of times in the year that this happens, it probably would be worth a while uh, investing in it. Um, yeah, so we'll just manage the speed and we'll get home all right. Uh, the fact that I'm driving quite slow, there is cars building up behind me at certain times, which I am aware of, and uh, I'm keeping an eye on that. So if there's a car come or, or a lorry end comes up behind me, uh, I am keeping in, I'm giving them every opportunity to overtake wherever they can. Uh, I don't want slowing anybody down or holding anybody up any more than I have to. Uh, I'm not going to pull in and stop, but I will pull, slow down and, and kind of pull over to the side to give plenty of room for you to overtake. But I had a cow behind me there for about, I'd, I suppose, six or eight minutes. And it peeped out a couple of times, didn't overtake. And I was pulling in, I kept pulling in nice and tight. There was a couple of really good straights where they could have overtook. Uh, you know, it wasn't a solid white line, it was a broken line on the road. Everything was in place for them to overtake. Did they overtake? Not at all. I even put on the indicator and just flashed a couple of times to show that I was pulling in and slowing down for them to overtake. They still didn't overtake. You know when they overtook? Got into a blind bend with lorries. I could see lorries in the distance coming, a, coming ahead of them. And they just overtook, got into a blind bend. And that's what happens. It's, I don't know, it's no wonder that there's so many accidents on the road. You know, you've drivers just get impatient in behind you and then they lose something stupid. I still can understand why that they didn't uh, overtake on the on, on the straight of the road. But anyway, just I end up getting frustrated looking at them. So uh, but it's just something you have to deal with on a daily basis. Look at this here. Just a lorry is after overtaking me get into this end where there's a bridge a narrowing part of the road. So like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. It just, it's just hard. To, it's hard to understand. But anyway, we move on. And just like that, the sunshine has disappeared. And we're back to the rain. So, same as yesterday. A few hours of sunshine in the morning and back to the rain.
All right, so we've moved on from getting the cattle feed in for the next week or so uh, to putting the fertilizer spreader on and heading over to get the first application out on uh, some of our winter crop. Um, there's rain forecast for tonight and tomorrow. So if we can get it out, it's been dry the last couple of days. Great trying yesterday, great trying today. So we'll see what it's like. Uh, some of our ground is just not travelable at the minute. Um, we don't want to go in and just completely muck it up. So, yeah, you're in a catch-22. You don't want to cut the whole ground up everywhere, but we need to get the application on, on it. It's, it should have been on a fortnight or three weeks ago, really. But it is what it is, and we're just trying to work around the weather and the conditions that we've been dealt at the minute. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get this first application on. <sighs> Got three or four hours. We've kind of left it as, as late as we can. Uh, to give the ground the chance to dry as much as it can and yeah we'll see we know shortly we're just coming up to the field so when i'm spread get spreading i'll uh, take a bit of footage and let you know how we're getting on all right so 12 acres in this field and it's fertilized uh, ground conditions not perfect but certainly workable uh, this is one of the worst uh, areas that there was in the field. I actually thought it'd be a lot worse. There's a wet area right down the bottom of this field, and I was expecting the tractor to sink down it. And really and truly, it's not really much worse than the likes of that. There, it sunk down a little bit, but nothing that you'd be too worried about. Um, so yeah, pleasantly surprised with just uh, how walkable the conditions was. But it has had two very good days trying it out. Uh, we've had no rain either Saturday or Sunday and even Friday hadn't got much rain. It was maybe a couple of light showers but not that much. So yeah, it's not too bad. At least we have this done. Uh, we put out 60 units of nitrogen on it in urea form. So uh, yeah, should we be able to see a wee bit of a bare uh, patch there so you can see all the all the, the, the bits of fertilizer just on the ground. Uh, so yeah, with the rain coming Quite heavy rain coming t tonight and tomorrow. Uh, not heavy, it's going to do I think about 8 mil tomorrow and they'll probably do a couple of mil tonight. So that'll help to wash it right in and hopefully it'll it'll help with the uptake of it straight away. But it's not too bad. Um, this is not too bad for 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 yellowing. Uh, crop is quite, actually quite green in it. Better than what I thought. Bit of yellowing here, just in this area along the headlands. Uh, and the same right round, but once you're in the middle of the field, it's not too bad. Maybe up on top of the hill, or a wee bit there as well. So, yeah, the rain will help to wash it in, and uh, hopefully, in, in a week or so's time, this year should be all jumping out of the ground. I hope. Uh, so, there's 12 acres done here, there's over 70 acres to be done on another plot, and we are not going to get in near that at the minute. Um, it's kind of half tempted nearly to go over and try a bit of it, but. It's just different ground and it's a lot wetter and I'm going to leave it for another. There's a bit of rain coming in the early part of the week but possibly towards the later part of the week and next weekend it mightn't be too bad. So it could dry out maybe. It could be a wee bit drier conditions then than even what it is now. Maybe it won't but in any case I'm going to leave it for now and we'll see, see what it does over the next week or so. Also the fertilizer spread up. Uh, I mentioned a couple of videos back that we had a bit of an issue with it where it wasn't open and closing the shutters the way it should and doing all the, the automatic uh, adjustments to spread accurately. Uh, well, we discovered what it was. There's a brain in the in the actual unit itself, in, in the frame of the fertilizer spreader and it's gone faulty. So we have to take it out and we may be able to be fixed. You can send it away. It's probably probably a board in there that there's a solder joint or something that's went wrong in it uh, or whatever. But um, yeah, we might be able to get it fixed. But we haven't just sent it away yet. I, I've left it in it because at least when it's in it, we have the whatever weight is in the spreader and we can use it for, for just calibrating. Uh, see what hectares or acres that we've done on the screen here and then look at what rate we're putting it on at and then we can either speed up or slow down to, to suit the rate and it means that we'd be able to work it out that it should be pretty accurate. Uh, the likes of that field I started spreading at 10k uh, it turned out I knew fairly quickly when I got round the headland a bit I was going too slow I ended up going up to 11.5k I was still too slow, went up to 13 
that was too fast so we come back down to about 12 and a half and I'd say 12 or just over 12 would be the sweet spot to get it right so at least the fact that you have the the box here that can tell you the weight that's in the spreader uh, it helps you just to keep it fairly you know fairly fairly accurate so that's the story with with it it's a uh, yeah it'll have to when we're finished spreading this round of fairtails we'll pull the that little ECU or whatever it is out of it and we'll send it away see if we can get it fixed if not we're going to have to see if we're getting one uh, whether it's new or second hand or whatever so yeah that's the way it goes